Yeah, yeah, it's a really an honour for me to be here today representing Lord Mayor of Dublin, Michal McDonagh. Um, this event is so important in terms of remembering women, remembering Republican women. Um, Winifred's 75th anniversary of her death has to be celebrated and commemorated. And what's really excellent for me as an Irish Republican from Dublin is that I'm here meeting a Lord Mayor of Belfast, the first woman Republican Lord Mayor of Belfast. And I look forward to greeting her in Dublin later on in the, during the year and get the ties with Dublin and Belfast, get them up and running and enhanced and just make sure that everyone knows that we're all one country, we've all one vision and women like Winifred Carney had visions for this country and it's just terrific that we're here today in, in a historic cemetery, Milltown Cemetery and I'm absolutely honoured and delighted to be here. Last down the glen one Easter morn To a city fair would I There armed lines of marching men In squadrons passed me by No pipes did hum, no battle drum did sound its low tattoo, but the angelus bell or the liffy swell rang out through the foggy dew. Right proudly high over Dublin town, they hung out the flag of war. Twas better to die neath an Irish sky than at Suvla or Sudelbar. And from the plains of Royal Meath, strong men came hurrying through, while Britannia's horns with their long range guns sailed in the foggy dew. Oh, the night fell black and the rifles crack mid perfidious Albion reel. In the lead and rain seven tongues of flame did shine o'er the lines of steel. By each shining blade a prayer was said That to Ireland her sons be true But when morning broke still the war flag shook Out its folds in the foggy dew T'was England bid our wild geese go that small nations might be free. But their lonely graves are by Suvla's waves on the fringe of the great North Sea. Oh, had they died by Pierce's side or fought with Cahobrough? The graves we keep where the Fenians sleep Neath the shroud of the foggy dew Oh, the bravest fell on the requiem bell Rang mournfully and clear For those who died that Easter tide in the springtime of the year While the world did gaze in deep amaze At those fearless men but few Who bore the fight that the freedom's light Might shine through the foggy dew as back through the glen I rode again, and my heart
heart with grief and soul. For I parted then with valiant men, whom I never shall see more. But to and fro in my dreams I go, and I kneel and I pray for you. For slavery fled, O oh glorious dead, when you fell in the foggy dew. Karja, everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be here today. It's my fifth day in office um, and it's I'm the fifth female uh, mayor in the history of Belfast so I'm delighted to be amongst friends, family and comrades here this afternoon. It is a hundred years ago this year that the women of Ireland struck a blow for the liberation of all women in Ireland and Britain. They broke through the blanket ban on women voting in elections. In 1918, after decades of campaigning women over 30 and certain property qualifications won the right to vote. Within 10 years in 1928, all women over the age of 21 were given the right to vote. In Ireland's last election as a united country in 1918, Constance Markovic was the first woman to be elected to Westminster. She didn't take her seat. Some things don't change. Nope. And because the first woman um, in the world to be appointed a, as a minister in government. She was appointed Minister for Labour in the first Republican government, the first Doyle. This was the world that Winifred Carney grew up in. She was a revolutionary, a Republican, a feminist, a socialist, a trade unionist and a Gale Gore. She was in the GPO in 1916 with other Belfast women, Nora and Ina Connolly, and the core sisters Elizabeth and Nell. She was James Connolly's secretary and was the last person to leave the burning GPO with him as he lay mortally wounded on a stretcher. Winnie was a candidate in the historic 1918 election in the Victoria Ward in East Belfast which at that time included the parish of St Matthews. This ward elected the former mayor and Shanna Dore today, Niall O'Donnell, and is represented by Republican Sinn Féin candidate Maria O'Donnell, who's a residing councillor there now. So it is fitting indeed that we are here to remember and acknowledge the foundations and the road that Winifred led to where we are now in this city and across the island. She made an invaluable contribution to the struggle for Irish independence, for women's rights, and for a better and socialist society. I'm delighted as the new mayor of Belfast um, that this is one of my early engagements and in the time ahead I will be unveiling a portrait of Winifred Carney in the mayor's parlour and I'll be inviting um, the relatives of 1916 and particularly Winifred's family for that event when I do that unveiling in the parlour um, in the time ahead. I'm also delighted that we're doing a lot of work in council and ensuring that the grounds, that the building itself is more reflective of the city and the society that we come from. And in engagement and consultation with the Irish Congress of Trade Unions, we are moving towards the erection of a permanent statue on the front lawns of City Hall to Winifred Carney. And I think that's not only important as a Republican to ensure that there is the Republican tradition which was rich when Winifred was growing up in Belfast, that that's reflected in the main civic building in the city, but also the fact that she's a woman. When women were often written out of history. When you walk through City Hall, it was very male dominated and that wasn't reflective of the society that we lived in at the time. The mill workers, those who were involved in campaigning for the right to vote, equal pay, and it is a fitting tribute that we have a strong woman such as Winifred Carney honoured on the front lawns of City Hall and a statue that is fixed to the building forever and cannot be removed. And I think it is important, um, and again Margaret touched on it, the complexity and the layers of her history. We do have a shared history and you see that 
um, really coming to the fore in the marriage of Winifred and of George McBride, a UVF volunteer who fought in the Battle of the Somme the same year that Winifred was in the GPO in Dublin with James Connolly. They fell in love and I suppose it was a labour of love as well for working class and socialist politics and the statue on the plinth will give recognition to her husband George um, who on his last days gave permission to the National Graves Association to attain and attend to Winifred's grave. So I will be pleased um, that I will be the mayor, hopefully that will be unveiling that statue. And again, I would extend an invite to Winifred's family and also to the relatives of 1916. We are standing on the shoulders of giants. Me coming in as a Sinn Féin councillor, as the first uh, female Sinn Féin mayor of Belfast, it's women like Winifred Carney that I look up to and women who have followed in her footsteps since then. And I think it's only right that we come together right across the island here today to play homage to her, that we don't forget her, and more importantly, that we write women back into our history again. So, Garmila Mayaga, thank you. Sinn Féin, Goanna Nis Carta Agus Ian Tosna Equality, Rights and Irish Unity.